Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Matt here, aka MattCat0410, with the review of the SRH840 by Shore. Now these will retail you for $200 on Shore's website, but you can find them around $160 on Amazon, and I actually got them as cheap as $131 on Amazon. Now, starting out with uh, what comes in the box, obviously you get the headphones right here. And you do get the coiled detachable cable, which is very nice. When it's coiled up like this, it's about 3 feet long, but if you pull it to its flat uh, design, it'll be about 9 feet long. It is detachable. Um, here is your standard 3.5 millimeter jack with a screw with uh, threads on it because it does come with a threaded quarter inch adapter, which is very nice. Obviously, you can see this is aimed towards professionals, and this is meant to be a more permanent addition to the headphones. So you can screw that right off. Again, this is a quarter inch adapter that is included, 6.3 millimeters, and then 3.5 millimeters or eighth inch adapter is what is on the headphone. Now you do take the other end and plug it into the uh, left ear cup, which we have right here. As you can see, there's a hole right there. And you simply stick it in so that the uh, Sure logo is right here on the side of the um, cable, which you can't really see because I only have a Canon point and shoot camera going here. But um, you put it in so that the logos are facing that way and then you turn it so that the logos are facing out at you and so then it's locked in and it will not come out until you unlock it and pull now also you will receive a carrying case with these headphones which is very nice it is fake leather but um it is pretty good overall you know it's not too bad it does feel kind of expensive it's thick enough it is jawstring and um it is nice that they include that now getting back to these headphones uh, straight away, these are very large headphones. If you can't tell, they are much bigger than the Audio Technica ATHM 50s, which I will be comparing these two throughout the video because I have used both, and um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of my opinion on the similarities and differences between the two because it seems like people always like to compare those headphones as they are referred to as kind of their best headphones in the price range, which is about 150 to 200 dollars. But to give you a point of reference, I have the Soul Republic Trax HD here, and as you can see. These headphones absolutely dwarf them. I mean, they are huge. I mean, just look at the size difference here. Um, they really are big. Even if it doesn't look like it, they are much bigger than the M50s or the Sony MDR-V6 or the Sony uh, MDR-V7506. They are much bigger than all those, much thicker and actually a lot heavier. These are very heavy in your hand, and they are very well built. So just getting onto some physical characteristics here. There is uh, silver hinges right here. These are plastic. These are not metal but they do look very nice. The center cap right here is actually metal um, the sh with the Sure logo. All this is plastic and they do extend and there are numbers on it so that's pretty nice. The wires are exposed right here. It is a faux leather hand headband with the Sure logo embedded and it is very nice. It's very um, it's definitely cushioned enough on the top right here. It feels nice. Uh, left and right identifiers right there and it also says um, right, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to show up on my camera, but it does say right right there, and then left on the other side, and um, it's very good overall, and when I first got these, I didn't understand how they could be so heavy with this full plastic construction, but as I already stated, these center caps right here are metal, and believe it or not, um, the hinge, I don't know how to, I don't know if I'm really going to be able to show you guys at all, uh, but the hinge inside of right here, inside of this crack right here, you can't see it from this side, but if you go to the other side and you look in right here, there is actually a metal hinge in there, which I thought was absolutely awesome that these do actually have metal construction into them and all these screws. Oh, there you can see it right there. You can see metal right there. That is absolutely awesome in my opinion. And you can see screws right here and those are all metal as well. Very well built. The cushioning on the headband is very, or on the ear cups is very nice. It is fake leather again, I'm going to assume, because real leather is very hard to find and very expensive. However, these do feel nice and expensive and they're very comfortable. Now, um, getting onto like how these fit and how they feel comfort wise, it's uh it's very good. They're so, so, so comfortable. The clamping force on these headphones is absolutely perfect in my opinion. I don't want any more. I don't want any less. They feel secure, but they're not over clamping in any sense. Uh, whatsoever. Now having said that, after wearing these for about even a half hour for me, especially when I have short hair, like say I just got my hair cut, um, even after a half hour this headband, because the headphones are heavy, I will get a small sharp pain on top of my um, 
head and I will have to adjust these forwards or backwards on my head to alleviate the pain but again that is not a huge issue um, and now having said all that how big these headphones are they look kind of absurd when you put them on your head because as you can see like say you were wearing your headphones like this you can see the headband has this tendency to go flat and stick out kind of and they do the headband when you have these on your head it sticks out very far from your head and it looks pretty goofy so you're not really going to want to be walking around with these not only that, but I mean they're just heavy and they're studio headphones and these really are not meant for portable use. So if you're looking to use these out around town, I would not recommend them at all. And I would recommend the M50s over them in that sense because the M50s look better, are a little bit more smaller, and they're definitely not as heavy. And they don't have exposed wires either, which is uh, definitely a plus. But um, yeah. And these do fold up in two different ways. They fold up in the classic studio monitor headphone style, which is actually what Shure demos on their website when you click on the 360 degree virtual view, whereas you just fold up each ear cup straight up like this. And I really don't like doing that on these headphones because it doesn't work quite right and they don't fit quite right. As you can see, they want to push together up here and they don't clamp all the way down here. It's actually putting a little bit of pressure on the headband and I don't really recommend that. What I would recommend doing is the way they come packaged in the box, and which is what I do when I fold these headphones up, is you simply just take them and you fold one ear cup in and the other right under it. And it's actually more compact than the other way as well. And it's not putting any pressure on the headband and it's easier to take it apart and unfold them again. It's just like that. I think it's great. So, yeah, I mean... Build on these headphones is definitely a 10 out of 10. These are so solid. They're so well made. You saw the metal hinges in here. You saw the metal end cap. And this plastic is so robust. It's so firm. It's so hard. Haha, <laughs> that's what she said. But yeah, it is really good plastic. And I love the way these headphones are built. And the comfort is definitely far none. The uh, ear, ear cushions right here are so, so, so soft. And what I really like is how big the opening on these ear pads are. As you can see, it's about 3 inches, and on studio headphones like the Audio-Technica ATH-M50, the bottom of my earlobe will actually touch the cushion, and I did not have that, that issue with these headphones, which I really, really like, and that's definitely something I prefer over the M50. So overall, I actually believe they're a little bit more comfortable than the M50s, and they're a little bit more well-built, um, disregarding the exposed wires right here, and they have the detachable cable, which is very nice. Getting onto the sound though, which is definitely the most important thing when considering a pair of headphones. And these are absolutely phenomenal, just straight up. I'll go down every section and tell you what I think. Um, starting out with the highs, they're really quite good. They're pretty immaculate, they're pretty articulate, they're definitely detailed. Cymbal crashes definitely sound great and they're never fatiguing. Um, they never really like cause pain in your e eardrums in the sense that like they're really piercing or anything. They definitely hold their own and they never stretch too far into the piercing end, which I really, really like. Um, talking about the mids on these headphones, they're definitely what's accentuated. I will be listening to Chris Brown or Coldplay or Matt Kearney and their vocals just stand out in front of everything else and it really sounds amazing. And when I say it stands out in front of everything else, that is definitely not a bad thing. It never washes out everything else. It's just definitely more prominent and it sounds great. Like you can just hear their clarity and you can hear their voice change octaves much better than you can in many other headphones. Definitely like the Soul Public Tracks HD, they absolutely put these to shame as far as sound quality. And it's definitely much better than the ATH M50s. Vocals on these headphones definitely crush the M50s because the M50s, uh, I mean they have good vocals but these just stick out so much better and it really is a much better experience when you're listening to vocalists and people who actually sing. Not necessarily rap or anything or anything like that, it won't be a big deal, but for vocalists and even dubstep, because dubstep has a lot of those electronic synthesizers and those are all pretty much fit into the mid-range category. And those stick out so well and it sounds amazing. Dubstep for me sounds incredible on these headphones. Now you might be asking me why would that sound amazing, because these are um, kind of they're rumored to have very weak bass and have a very flat EQ. And they do have a very flat EQ. But in my testing, I do not think these have weak bass in any sense whatsoever. It's exact. It's exactly what it should be, is what it is. It never um, does what it shouldn't do uh, for better or for worse. It's always right where it needs to be, in my opinion. And it's not going to shake your brains off. But it does have authority when you need it to have authority. And when I'm listening to a dubstep song, like Scaring the Monsters and Night Sprites, like Skrillex, uh, Bangarang by Skrillex or The Matrix by Bass Nectar. It's there. It's hitting me hard. 
Um, and when I'm saying all this, I'm referring to it out of a straight source, like an iPad or something, without the EQ on. Now, when I put these in to my vintage Yamaha receiver that can manually EQ these and I can give them more bass, oh man, can these things pound. And believe it or not, they can actually pound harder than the M50s when you manually EQ them. Out of an iPod, the M50s will have more bass. However, if you manually EQ these, these are capable of more bass. And what I mean by that is... The M50s, when I plug them into my receiver and I really turned up the bass and started to turn up the volume to see how loud they can go before losing composure, uh, the M50s low end would start to rattle much sooner than these headphones. These headphones were capable of a much louder, much deeper bass and that was really awesome and I think that's overlooked a lot because people always refer to the M50s as having more bass, which they do, but that's really only true out of an iPod. As soon as you start to give these some more power, you start to give them a little bit more food and you really manually EQ them, these can hit much harder than the M50s in my opinion and that is absolutely awesome and that's actually something I really wasn't expecting when I got these but it's definitely a pleasant surprise. Soundstage on these headphones is quite good. It's definitely better than the M50s and I think what contributes to a lot of that is the fact that the ear space right here is a lot bigger than on the M50s and um, yeah, it's definitely better soundstage in my opinion. And instrument separation and imaging, uh, it's good. You will never notice things mushing together on the, on these headphones, unlike the Soul Public Tracks HDs. You will never notice stuff mushing together on these headphones. It really, really does sound good. Everything is separated. And now, speaking in terms of instrument separation and soundstage, will it be as good as an open back headphone like the Sennheiser HDs in these in this price range? Uh, no, it really won't sound quite as good as that as far as instrument separation and soundstage, or will it even sound as good as other closed back headphones like the Audio-Technica ATH A900 audiophile headphone? No, it won't even be as good as that. However, for a closed back uh, studio headphone like the Sony MDR-V6, like the Audio-Technica ATH M50, I definitely think these probably have the best soundstage out of all of those competitors. Um, so yeah, sound quality is definitely phenomenal on these headphones, and for the price, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Really, it's that good. It's perfect. Like, I'm having so much trouble trying to find a flaw in the, in the, in the audio with these headphones. I really, I listened to these, I was like, man, there's almost nothing wrong with these headphones. And there really isn't. And now, just for reference, these headphones, while I'm doing this review, as they sit right here, probably have about 60 hours of burn-in, just if you're wondering, which is plenty to get any of the noticeable changes to occur to the driver, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, just going over these again, again, phenomenal build quality, uh, definitely great comfort, other than the fact that, again, they will get a little bit uncomfortable if you have short hair or if your head's just a little sensitive, because these are heavy. And um, I have read reviews where people said that it doesn't give them any problems, but for me, it did give me a little bit of pain after a decent amount of wearing these. Again, stellar build quality, stellar comfort, stellar sound. Everything really on these headphones is just immaculate. These are so well made and all around just a great closed back headphone in their price range. And overall, I would take these over the M50s any day other than the looks. The M50s do look absolutely beautiful. And even these look great. I think they look perfectly professional. The silver accenting doesn't overpower the black. The black doesn't overpower the silver. And I really think these are actually look pretty nice. But again, they're just big and awkward. Um... So yeah, uh, definitely a great headphone. I definitely recommend it. Again, comes with a detachable cable, a case, and a threaded quarter-inch adapter. Um, and yeah, this has been Matt here, aka MattCat0410, with the Shure SRH840. Retails you for 200 on Shure's website, but you can find them for about $160 on Amazon. And again, I definitely recommend these. Definitely think they're better than the ATHM50s. And uh, I believe my job here is done. So I will catch you guys next time.